transcendental analysis proposed by Maresha. We shall just have a, an overview of it. Essentially, it wants to show that human beings are openness to the unlimited existence. In short, human beings are openness to God. This is the this is based on our intellectual dynamism. Mareshal tries to understand human beings as openness to the unlimited existence. So, how does he proceed? First and foremost, he starts with something very, very simple, which is accessible to all. Simple and direct starting point that is a direct judgment. Examples, Pune is the cultural capital of India. India is a huge nation. President Trump rules America. These are all direct judgments. And uh, direct judgment we always make. You can never deny that we make direct judgments. We keep on making direct judgments and that is how we come to know about God, about the world. So the knowledge about the world comes from our direct judgment, number one. Number two, direct judgment is a movement. It doesn't stop. It goes on and on. We want to know always more and more. It has no limit. Third one, pay special attention. When we analyze the direct judgment, we experience a limit and we experience also two particular aspects. The first one is the essence in every direct judgment. Essence means whatness, what is it? When we speak about JDV is a good place, JDV, what is the essence of JDV? The formation, the training in philosophy and theology, that is the whatness, what is JDV? Also, we talk about the existence. Existence is thatness. JDV exists, Pune exists. Now the normal essence and existence that we encounter, they're all limited. Essence is limited, existence is limited. And essence is necessarily limited. If JDV's essence is philosophy formation, then it cannot be a laboratory for COVID study. Therefore, philosophy formation, the essence of JDV, limits it from being a research center of COVID. So the essence of something necessarily limits itself. If the essence of something is that it is a cat, catness is the essence, then it cannot be a jacquard. The catness limits it from being a jacquard. Therefore, essence is self-limiting. While existence is not self-limiting, existence of cat, of jacquard, of JDV, research center in Hyderabad, all of them are possible. So, existence of mango and essence, that, that is sweetness. The sweetness of the mango limit, limits itself and does not allow it to be sour or bitter. So, the limit in direct judgment analysis implies that existence we encounter is limited. Essence is also limited. So in the normal direct judgment, when we analyze, we see that existence is limited and essence also is limited. But essence is necessarily limited. Existence is not necessarily limited. Therefore, we can think of, we can think of unlimited existence. So we can think of unlimited existence. Unlimited existence is a possibility. Unlimited essence is not a possibility. 
fourth point, this means that because of our dynamic openness, we are open to unlimited existence. We are open to unlimited being or unlimited existence. Now, three proofs to show that this unlimited existence really exists. Three proofs. One is very crucial. The transcendental analysis of direct judgment, that's what we have been doing, showed us existence, essence, and unlimited existence. Our intellect is open to unlimited existence. Now, we started off from direct goal, uh, from direct judgment, direct judgment. The direct goal of direct judgment is the world. The direct goal of direct judgment is the world. While the ultimate goal of direct judgment is unlimited existence. Now the key, we are really assuming that the direct goal of direct judgment, which is the real world, is real, exists. We are assuming that this world exists. It's a meaningful assumption. By all means, we should hold on to that assumption. We are assuming that the real world, which is the direct goal of direct judgment, is real. If we do so, if we assume that the real world, which is the direct goal of direct judgment, is real, then by the same logic, we have to assume that the unlimited existence, which is the ultimate goal of the same direct judgment, must also be real. In other words, the formulation is simple. If the direct goal of direct judgment is assumed to be real, then by the same logic, we have to assume that the ultimate goal of direct judgment the unlimited existence is also real. Please spend some time, have a look at it and read it. Okay, the second reason is simpler. The unlimited existence we seek, but we seek unconsciously, not consciously. And every one of us seek that. Therefore, something that is sought unconsciously and collectively must really exist. Otherwise, our whole life would become absurd. Absurd. That's the second reason. The third reason is the unlimited existence is a conceptual is not a conceptual possibility, but an existential possibility. The unlimited existence is an existential possibility because direct judgment is an existential fact. It is not a conceptual fact. And when does an existential possibility come about? An existential possibility is something that existed in the past, in the present, or that may come to exist in the future. My grand grand child is an existential possibility because he may come to exist in the future. But in the case of God, if God had existed in the past, then of course he would come to exist now also. If God existed in the past, he would come to exist now also because there is no one who will put an end to God. If God exists now, present, then he will come to, he will continue to exist in the future. The third one, unlimited existence cannot come to exist only in the future. Because if it comes to exist after millions of years, that means there must be something greater than the unlimited existence which enables this unlimited existence to come to exist. And that is not possible for us. Therefore, taking all these things, we do assume 
that the unlimited existence exists now, implying it existed in the past and it will come to continue to exist in the future. All because of the simple fact that the unlimited existence that we seek is an existential possibility, not really a conceptual possibility. This, in short, sums up their transcendental analysis. Uh, 